This is the 2023 Surface 604 Twist. It's a folding electric fat bike with a really powerful motor. You can see the Bafang branding on this. This is rated 500 to 750 watts, 80 newton meters of torque. It's very powerful, very zippy, and especially because it's built into these smaller wheels. So anytime, you know, it's the diameter is a little bit smaller, you get a mechanical advantage for both the motor and for the brakes. This bike has 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brakes with motor inhibitors up here, Tektro brake levers. They activate blinking mode for the rear light. So this bike is feature complete, ready to go, kind of any environment, whether you're having fun, cruising along, beautiful area like we are right now. This is Scottsdale, Arizona. Or maybe you're using it to commute to work every day. You got a little trunk bag or pannier. You'll notice there's a little bungee loop down here. You could have panniers on the side or a trunk bag, maybe even a child seat. It's a really sturdy rack. It's built into the frame. You can't remove it. So it does add a little bit of weight. And this bike is fairly heavy. I weighed it at 63.8 pounds, which again, you look at it and you're like, huh, it's kind of small, you know, it's a folding bike. But then when you actually try to lift it, maybe you fold it in half, you realize it's probably a good idea to take that battery pack off, about eight pounds right there. I think the motor itself weighs about eight pounds. So let's go through some of the updates. Compared to 2022, this one, the stem, it doesn't telescope up and down, but it's a little sturdier. And that's the benefit that you get. It's also angled a little bit more forward. I think it's 12 degrees. So the reach is a little bit more comfortable, full size kind of a feel versus something that's very, um, you know, kind of squished. And that's nice. You'll notice that they've flared the seat tube here. So it's a little bit sturdier and increases the frame stiffness. Cause when you have a step through like this with the deep wave style frame, having these extra gussets right here and tubing and that square tube right there, that's gonna make the bike stiffer. Cause again, it is fairly heavy and you have those heavier tires front and rear and they are 20 by four inches wide. They say maximum PSI 30. Um, they don't have a minimum, but I'm estimating five to 30 PSI. That's what I've observed. And if you actually wanna ride this on like sand or snow or loamy, squishy terrain, you can lower the tire pressure and they'll spread out and increase that surface uh, contact patch. They're gonna be a little less efficient, but that's also gonna absorb some vibration and make it a little bit more comfortable. I love that they have the reflective sidewall stripes. I love these 100 millimeter wide plastic fenders. They do kind of bounce around a little bit, but they're not making too much noise and they're gonna be more durable. They're not gonna crack. They're not adding quite as much weight as aluminum alloy or steel. Another upgrade is this Samex hollow spindle right there at the bottom bracket. So it's a little bit stiffer. It's kind of an upgraded part, especially compared to like a square tapered spindle. 170 millimeter crank arms, nice, sturdy, solid, well-go aluminum alloy platform pedals that fold. So you can make this thing fairly compact. Again, it's, it's a fairly sizable bike, but that's nice to see. And then some of the other stats, 135 millimeter hub spacing up front since it is a fat bike. And then in the rear, 175 nice cassette so this is a SRAM X5 10 speed 11 to 36 teeth so that's a really wide spread and it looks like it's nickel plated so it's going to be a little more resistant to rust and and just kind of slicker and easier to work with as you're shifting gears we also have a really sturdy chain ring guard okay and it's going to protect your pant leg or your dress from touching the chain not completely this isn't a full cover but it does give you a little bit of extra protection and it also protects the bottom bracket down here if you come in contact with like a log or a big rock or something you'll see there's also this arm right here which helps the bike to stabilize if you have folded it and that way it's not tipping from side to side there isn't like a, a rubber bungee um, or magnets that keep this folded once it is folded. So consider bringing your own and maybe using a towel between the bike when it's folded so that you can keep it from vibrating and kind of rattling against itself and chipping the paint. There isn't a slap guard down here, which another sort of paint question mark for me. This chain could bounce up and down and maybe nick that up over time. Not the end of the world. You could use a piece of clear plastic box tape to protect that or get an aftermarket um, slap guard off of Amazon or something. You'll notice that there are a bunch of cables right here. They're coming mostly internally routed through the frame and then they extrude right here 
we've got some quick disconnects. The motor power cable is on the, the right side of the frame, this drivetrain side. So it adds a little bit of clutter here. You can see the shifter cable and the power cable right there, but at least it's not sticking way out. I've seen some other motors now, they're, they're bringing the power on the left side of the bike, which is kind of nice. It sort of balances it out, but the cable management is decent. And for a folding bike, uh, having the cables maybe not be quite as hidden, you know, it gives them a little bit more flex and maybe easier to work with if you have to do a replacement at some point. Okay, I just did the folding. It's a bit of a lift, especially with the battery pack on. You make sure that left crank arm is down and maybe even back, but you can see how the bike frame is now sitting on that support arm that we looked at earlier. It gets pretty tight. Be wary of, of the derailleur that's exposed right here. If you were to try to lay it on this side, that could be banged up a little bit, so be careful. And on the other hand, if you lay it on this side, there's the handlebar, the bell, the display, and everything. You kind of twist the display to, to make it a little bit um, just better protected there. So having it upright like this is pretty good. You could even drop the saddle and make it a little bit smaller if you wanted to. And both of the latches have a little lock on them so that the bike won't accidentally fold when you're when you're riding. Seems fairly safe. There's some good wrap down here to keep the wires from getting pinched. Just protects them pretty well. Really appreciate that nice big seat clamp. Makes it easier to adjust that saddle height. And then down here with the buckles, you can see they both have a little locking piece. Although we do not have a suspension fork or a suspension seat post, this is something you could upgrade here. 30.4 millimeter diameter, 300 length, and with that, that flared seat tube, you can actually get this all the way down and have a fairly low minimum saddle height, making it more approachable. Uh, let's talk a bit about the battery and the charger. So the charger that they ship with it is pretty nice. It's got the color sticker and feels fairly high quality. It weighs about a pound and a half, and it's only two amps, so it's not the fastest thing in the world. $23.99 for this bike, and let's go ahead and just take that off. First, I wanna show you the charge port here on the left-hand side, nice and high. It's not down here where it's gonna get wet or kicked or dirty, but of course the fenders are also gonna protect it. And then the key, look at this, up high on the right-hand side. They're, so they're both placed really well, in my opinion. We just put the key in, unlock it, and then we could just, there we go, turn that. We can pull it out. Yeah, yep, yeah, you feel it. There we go, okay. 48 volt, 14 amp hours, 672 watt hour. I like that it sits in from the top so it's not gonna drop down and collide with the fender or just fall out accidentally. It's easy to get this thing back in and then lock it back into position. Okay, there we go. So now it's it's secure. That's nice. And it looks good on the black frame, of course. If this was gray, you'd, you'd see these black accents a little bit more, but in this case, everything blends in. I love that they've got bottle cage bosses right here. They're using some high-end parts here. Selly Royale Ascenza Plus. We got the ergonomic stitched faux leather grips. These are not locking, so they can twist on you a little, little bit, but when you combine those with the SRAM X5 trigger shifters up here that both use your thumb like this, so you're not having to use one of these really big uh, like SIS index shifters from Shimano where you have to reach way up. This is much more, it's quicker and it's just a higher quality experience in my opinion. Then, then there's room for the bell right here. So that's kind of nice, kind of bring that over. <laughs> and then of course the brake lever, since they are hydraulic, you have adjustable reach. This does only come in one frame size, sort of the one, one size fits most. I've heard that it's comparable to the small medium Rook. It's kind of their, their step through city bike. And for me, it feels pretty good. I'm 5'9", weigh about 140 pounds, got 131 inch inseam. It's very easy for me to approach and mount this bike and get going. It's very stable because of those fat tires. Uh, and they're actually fairly quiet. You'll notice that they've got this semi-slick tread pattern. They've given me decent grip going off-road, but I'm not really mountain biking. I mean, it's just grass and stuff. Everything around here feels comfortable and it's fun. And it's again, it's quiet because you don't have a bunch of these knobs like vibrating. I love that in addition to the reflective sidewall stripes, we've got integrated lights. So this is the Shiny 120 from Bouchel. Very bright light and it has side window cutouts. And then that rear light is nice too. Let's go ahead and power this thing up. Hold the power button for a second. The color LCD display lights up. It's very large and you can swivel it to reduce glare like I just did. And we have a dedicated light button here. So if I hold that for a couple seconds, there we go. 
there's the rear light with two LEDs. And if I hold the brakes, there's that blinking feature that's supposed to increase your visibility. And then here's a headlight, 120 lumens, pretty bright. Points where you steer could get a little bit blocked by that fender, but they've got it up high on this aluminum alloy like support arm. So they're doing the best they can. And again, the quick disconnects all over here. So the bike is fairly modular. Surface 604 ships direct, so you could buy this online and assemble it yourself, which shouldn't be too much work. These folding bikes are pretty easy to assemble. I picked this up from Rides in Motion in Scottsdale. They assembled it. It's in great shape. And I just wanna say thank you. You know, it's always nice to visit a shop and have that kind of experience where you could do a test ride. They do sell this in two different colors. So we've got this satin, almost matte black, and then there's also a nice gray color. In the past, there was kind of a pink color, special edition. You might see that floating around from time to time. Um, I do wanna point out that the kickstand, although it doesn't create pedal lock, there are times when I've been actually riding the bike and my heel would strike the just the folding part right here. Uh, I don't have especially large feet, but you'll see because it's such a wide hub spacing back here, the frame is fairly wide, the pedal and, and the crank arm, they just get pretty close to the frame and then this is hanging down a little bit. Another quick look at, uh, at the rear dropouts. We don't have a dedicated torque arm, but we do have a torque washer and the frame is fairly thick. So in terms of the power, a lot of times I'm, I'm thinking like, okay, you know, how sturdy is this? Make sure that the bolts and everything are are tight uh, over time. If you feel that rattling loose or something, you don't want that to chew into the frame and, and damage it. Um, let's see what else we got here. Yeah, the battery weight, low and center, pretty good job right there. And then uh, a torque sensing pedal assist. That's the other thing that's kind of unique about Surface 604. This metal plate over here actually gauges how hard you're pushing when you're pedaling. It's not just an on-off cadence sensor. It's much smoother and more dynamic. And that's that's very cool. There are some trade-offs though. If you're on a bumpy trail and that chain is bouncing all around like this, it can actually set off the torque sensor when you didn't mean to. Uh, other times I've started the bike and I'm pedaling and then I turn on the display and I think this thing resets and measures every time you start. And so it might measure your pedaling and then it, it could adjust that torque setting incorrectly. And you might notice like it's not responding right. You might have to reset the bike and start over in that case. This is a class two electric bike, meaning it has a throttle and it goes up to 20 mile per hour. Unless you go into the settings and you unlock it and then you can make it class three. So that would go up to like, I think they say kind of like 30 miles per hour in, in practical experience for me, it's 26, maybe 28 or something like that. Still pretty neat. If you live in a place where you're commuting on the side of the street and you are allowed to go faster, if you're taking this off road, most trails only allow like class one, in which case you could remove the throttle and then it would be a class one. It wouldn't have, it would just be pedal assist. Uh, it's just kind of neat that they give you those options. So to get into the settings, you hold plus and minus like this. And then we have display settings, advanced settings, and exit. Uh, there's a lot in there, so I'll let you explore that on your own. But I love the display. It has battery percentage, a light indicator that matches that dedicated button, and a bunch of readouts like your current speed. We got trip distance, odometer. If we press the I, it cycles through some other readouts like max speed, average speed, and trip time, and back to odometer. Of course, we can do minus to go to zero, in which case, not even the throttle works. You're basically just on a bike that's kind of heavy with some integrated lights, but you get all the readouts and stuff, which is kind of cool. And then we can go plus, 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 all the way up to five levels of assist. So there's some good variation that matches the 10 speed drivetrain. It's a pretty nice bike. Like the components on this aren't just cheap, like Shimano Tourney, 14 to 28 tooth. Again, this is 11 to 36 tooth, and that really complements that potential like class three setting that we just talked about. Other things you can do is adjust the brightness in here, and you can change from like miles to kilometers, a bunch of stuff like that. Another cool feature of the display is that it has a full-size USB charging port in the base, which could be used with your smartphone. You could play some music, add additional lights up here. And that's really where ideally you'd have a light up high because this is already sort of a lower bike and then the light wouldn't be blocked by the fender or anything. I'm really not complaining too much. These are great lights, but something to think about. And part of the reason I think they, they didn't do the headlight up here is because when you fold the bike, it could get bumped. And of course there's all these wires and stuff in the way. So, okay, let's do a little ride here. I'm in no assist. And again, the throttle is not gonna work. I, I did wanna point out one of the secrets here. You can hold that minus button 
and it gives you walk mode, which could be very handy if you're off-road, you, somehow you get a flat tire, maybe you're carrying a bunch of cargo and in a crowded area. So that's cool, kind of gets me going here for a second. And then as I start pedaling, this is without any assist. And it's feeling pretty good. You know, it's doable, especially with that wider cassette, that 36 tooth sprocket in the rear, it makes it easy to start and everything. And then as I press the plus button, just a little bit of support back there. Not too much, you know, it's just right. The bike is very stable, because of the fat tires. And now that I've got any level of assist, I can punch that throttle and it just takes off. <laughs> I don't want to go flying off this uh, ramp here. <clears throat> Maybe we can take a little detour back here. Very, very zippy. And having a throttle is uh, wonderful if you are going off-road into soft sand or loamy terrain like we talked about, because then you can focus on balancing the bike and not having to try to pedal at the same time. I've ridden electric bikes like in Mexico on the beach and we lowered the tire pressure all the way down to five PSI and the throttles, they, they got us going and then it actually worked and it was such a cool experience. So they are, it's a pretty special type of e-bike. to 20 miles per hour. We do not have the bike unlocked right now, so that's our top speed, class two. Feeling pretty good. Oh yeah, brake test. <laughs> Got some air. Our fenders, the chain, kickstand. It's pretty quiet. Guys, I think that is about it. That's the 2023 Surface 604 Twist. For the full written review, check out electricbikereview.com. Got all the specs and stuff back at the site. I also have a compare tool because there are a number of these kind of you know compact folding fat bikes now, and you could pick the color you like or maybe the company uh, that you're you know, maybe there's a shop nearby, like Rides in Motion, that can sell this to you. This review is being done for free. I'm just checking out bikes that are interesting. If you feel like I missed something or you have other input, sound off and I'll, I'll try to help you out. And I love you guys. Ride safe. We'll see you next time.